Hi, it's Dwyer, DwyerCrime.blog, RichardDwyer.co, both free sites. Today is March the 1st, 2021. Let's talk about HBO's docu-series on the turmoil involving Mia Farrow through her eyes and her former husband, Woody Allen. But first remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now let me say, um, I've handled some divorces. I'm primarily a divorce lawyer here in Silicon Valley, California, and I've handled cases where people have made salacious allegations where experts have had to be hired by the parties to sort through the allegations. I know from personal experience that divorce doesn't bring out the best in people. So, I was hesitant, very hesitant, to see this Woody Allen, Mia Farrow, HBO docu-series. Right, I thought, okay, these are people who were involved in a divorce. The other woman turned out to be Mia Farrow's daughter. That had to be a jaw dropper. The feelings had to be raw, even years later. So I thought, you know, it's going to be hard to figure out the truth here. But my partner, she loves multi-layered stories. Right? Both of us like to sit down and watch crime shows on TV and try to figure out what's true and what's not true. So, just like in the earlier Ted Bundy video that I posted here on YouTube, and for those who don't know, the channel is youtube.com slash Esquire777, I got talked into watching this Mia Farrow Woody Allen HBO docu-series. So far, I've only seen the first two episodes, and I'm absolutely riveted. First, let's dispel something that's in the news. Soon Ni, I believe it looks like it should be pronounced Soon Yi, but they pronounce it Soon Ni. Soon Ni and Woody Allen have come out and have condemned the show. Right? They've called it, in effect, a hatchet job. Right? One-sided. Doesn't have their side. What I want people to realize, especially those who haven't watched the show, who may have been hesitant like I was, is that this is anything but a shallow hit job. Understand, you have third-party witnesses. And I'm not talking about kids. And Dylan is on the show. Ronan is on the show. I'm not talking about people who were kids back when some of these events, accusations of pedophilia happened. No, I'm talking about adults who were around Woody and Dylan way back when. Some are family friends. Importantly, some are professionals. Understand, there are events that third-party adults witnessed. Some of them are on the show. This isn't a shallow piece. It's a deep piece involving third-party adult weaknesses. That's the first point I want to make. The second point, and it's jarring to me, right? I was raised in New York City. I'm a child of the 1970s. I'm in my 50s now. I'm a child of the 1970s. I remember when Woody Allen was an A-plus celebrity, right? A, uh, very admired filmmaker who was making Oscar-winning movies, right? Movies other filmmakers wanted to imitate. Movies like Annie Hall, 
movies like Manhattan. So, you know, I'm also a Nick fan. And uh, I remember watching Nick games and seeing Woody Allen on TV in the crowd. He was one of the celebrity uh, Nick fans who would often attend Nick games, right? New York is as much a Woody Allen town as it is anyone else, right? J-Lo, uh, Jerry Seinfeld. When you think New York City, you know, Woody Allen used to be royalty. Let me just say, I thought I knew Woody Allen. I did not. On the show are recordings, right? To me, the most damning is a recording of a telephone conversation that Mia Farrow had with Woody. Right from the text, it looks like Woody called her after Mia became aware of the fact that Woody had been sleeping with her daughter. Right, this is uncomfortable subject matter. It's even uncomfortable for me just saying it, but I believe it's important subject matter. It's uncomfortable but important. Well, understand, Woody is so intentionally, emotionally unaware, right? He really is so self-involved in his own identity, his own work, that he doesn't seem to have any appreciation, or at least he doesn't acknowledge an appreciation of the impact he's having on the lives of Brown them. It's all scorched earth. So, he calls me a pharaoh. And in the conversation with me a pharaoh, in fact, let's continue this video in part two. It looks like I've lost the video feed here. We'll pick it up in part two of this video. Thanks for stopping by.